Hey, cutie pie. Daddy? Nicole, it's Irving. Oh, <sighs> sorry. Must have been sleeping pills and those beans. Since I've been here, it's like I'm literally hibernating. You had a tough day yesterday. I think I had a dream. About? Leonard, maybe. Okay, uh, I need you to pay attention, though. Should I worry? The storm brought down some power lines. There are blackouts all over. Actually, the lights are acting a little weird. <sighs> I was afraid of that. I don't like the idea of you up there on your own in the dark. We gotta do something. My electrical know-how is slightly limited. It's okay. I can guide you to the emergency generator. If we activate it, you'll be self-sufficient. That's it? Uh, there are two ways of getting to the circuit breaker. Straight through the garage's side door, or from the floor you're on. But? The garage side door is stuck. You'll have to pass through the crawl space along the entire building and climb down from your floor. If the power goes out, you'll be completely in the dark. All right. What do I have to do? Uh, check the closet in your father's apartment and see if he left anything you can use for lighting. Ah, oh, on my way. Dude. God, his fuckboy energy is off the charts. I guarantee you, if it was 2020 in this game, he would be sending her creepy asterisk roleplay hit-ons. Oh, look at that! I thought I lost you that time the Thompson girl came to play. Leonard must have found you someplace. Oh, the key's missing. Well, maybe better that way. Alright, we gotta find, like, a flashlight or something. What? Are two sides the same color? Weird. That's very strange. So we know that Leonard was an astrophysicist of sorts. And we are into hockey. And maybe he was trying to find like, the ghost dimension or something to find his ex who he impregnated. You know, the thing that really creeps me out is so the events of him cheating on his mom with a woman happened 10 years ago and the girl who he cheated on with and got pregnant was the same age as his daughter 10 years ago how old were we you know it doesn't even matter and then in the cover art for this game news i'm not surprised the academic world distanced itself from leonard why'd you say that Magic in the stars? Life beyond life? The physics of the impossible? You heard of them? He was a man of science. And science has a method. Oh, maybe he was searching for a new point of view. Yeah, sure. Tell that to the treatment of quantum consciousness oh that he never no. finished writing. I catch your drift. Oh my god. <laughs> but the the cover art for this game is a retainer. That looks like a butterfly. I don't know, man. It sounds like a creepazoid to me. But maybe it's gonna turn out that, like, oh, she was never the lava. We gotta find a flashlight of some sort in here. I must enter the crawl space in the first floor staff area. But I need a, a light source. Where am I going to get that? I have to go to the closet in my dad's apartment. Okay. This is the closet. Probably somewhere in here. There's a closet. I'm just trying to figure out Irving's deal. He was probably friends with the dad, and the dad was like, these bad things happen, and he was like, I'm in love with your daughter, even though I've never met her. And you're like, dude, don't. I 
can still hear that guy telling me Rachel's alive. If he calls back, go into special protocol mode. Which is? Trying to sell him a vacuum cleaner. Oh, why did I even ask? <laughs> Dude, remember when he fucking said hello to us by calling us sweetheart? What the fuck did he call us? Yeah, sweetheart or something? And I was like, you don't know me like that, sir. <laughs> Oh, we got a light, a Any light news? source. I found a Polaroid. Family photo, anything important? No, I mean a camera. It looks like it works. You want to take a photo of the generator? No, you moron. I was thinking of using the flash for lighting. Oh, smart. You can try. I wonder who this belonged to. This Leonard is going to be Some scary. Some client probably left it. You can't imagine what people leave in hotels. Oh, I could tell you about the rubber friend that Mr. Rochford's widow left here in 82. Mayor Linden's kids and I used it as a miniature Indian totem pole for the whole summer. It was a huge scandal. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, yep. Anyway, the Polaroid's better than nothing. The light from the flash could come in handy. I also get bad vibes from Ver Irving, chat. Just something's not right, you know? <coughs> okay, so... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I have to... Enter the scrawl place in the first floor staff area. Is this the... No, this is the main floor. I need to go to the first floor. Okay. Master suite. First floor staff area. Where is that? I don't... Is there a staff room? Ooh, this is gonna be scary. I know something creepy is going to be shown. I know it. This is too scary for me. If the storm cut everything, how's the phone even working? He said he like did it to like a cellular uh, network. He basically made a proto cell phone. So it's like a it's like a satellite cell phone radio thing. It doesn't sound real to me, but whatever. Oh yeah, the person who called the hotel on the regular phone. Hey. Okay, almost there. I think the lights are getting worse. You need to move fast. On the same floor of your apartment, in the staff area, there's a small storeroom. Your father asked us several times to fix the lock. Fingers crossed, it's still broken. That's where the access to the crawl space is. The crawl space? I'd totally forgotten that. Remember where to go? No. But I do remember the panels were really hard to open. I wasn't allowed to go in there. What happens when I get to the closet? You'll have to go down to the breaker box and switch it on. All right. Doesn't sound like rocket science. Uh, hurry up, please. You suck at reassuring people. Wait, why is this room screwed shut like that? That's weird. Okay, how do I open this door? Okay. I don't like that. That is too much for me. Thank you. Guys, this is too, this is too scary.
Some fucking suicide ghost is gonna... scared <laughs> this kind of reminds me of the part where you have to use a Polaroid in Silent Hill 2 3 <coughs> guys I'm scared I found the crawl space, and also a dynamo flashlight. Know how to use it? I think I just have to push the lever continuously. Is everything okay? I don't remember the crawl space to be so narrow when the technicians went inside. Maybe you gained weight. <laughs> it's called growing up. Yeah, idiot. rude. I bet he's like, shit, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Now she'll never marry me. Uh. Hi, I left you the dynamo flashlight. You'll have to work a little to make us some light. Haha, <laughs> Ben. Can I, like, shake it or anything? I can definitely see a lot of influences from Gone Home, Firewatch, Life is Strange. Silent Hill. Shit. What's wrong? I am totally in the dark. I'd appreciate some help. Uh, okay, stay calm. Uh, can you see the bundle of cables above your head? Uh, anyway, there should be some cables along the... Uh, yeah, I know what a bundle is. Okay, okay. Easy does it. All you need to do is follow them and you'll get to the generator room. Don't go any other way, otherwise... Who knows where you'll end up. Perfect. I got the flashlight, sorta. I got my breadcrumb trail, more like my cable trail, whatever. I can do it. All right, yeah, easy. Does it. I kinda wanna explore this way first though. What's over here? Oh, that's where the creepy handprint is. Let's go back inside. Uh, people are saying that they find this scarier than an actual horror game because they don't know what to expect. Me neither. This is scary. Like, what if a ghost pops out? I'm sure there's not going to be any ghosts. It's going to be one of those things where, like, nothing was... Okay, I just realized you guys probably can't see anything, so I'm gonna do this. What's this way? 
I'm, I want to open all the... <laughs> Was that a hand? Scaly. Does that not look ominous as fuck to you? With the red lighting glowing out of it? Am I going to hell? Kinda reminds me of Jurassic Park. Is a Velociraptor gonna jump out at me? Is everything working now? Whose lipstick is this? Red doll. I picked it up. Uh, what's up? Uh, hi. I, I want to ask you something. Okay. Uh, go ahead. How long has the hotel been closed? Uh, about four years. Uh, yeah, from 89. I mean, did anyone uh, think about doing a thorough clean of the basement? Don't know. Uh, probably pretty rushed. Why? I found something. Another Polaroid? A lipstick. Huh. Doesn't that seem weird? It's... a lipstick? You don't get it. It looks really old. I remember this brand. The, the girls at school used it. Weird. What? It didn't dry out. I could even use it now. It's perfect. I'm afraid I don't get it. Irving, this brand doesn't exist anymore. It's been, I, I don't know, nine or ten years. Strange someone should wait ten years to open a lipstick just to use it, don't you think? Why are you telling me this, Nicole? You want to get pretty there with the generator? Are you crazy? Nicole, it's just another one of those things customers forget. Uh, I... Well, yeah. You're probably right. I don't know. Sounds like one of those things that... <laughs> I don't know. I think Irving probably goes down there and covers his penis with the lipstick and says, I'm closer to you than ever now. Nicole, please. I know this is the shade that you wore. You know. Here I am. You didn't tell me you knew Leonard. I, I thought we'd been through that. Let me finish. Mm. I his spent order, the night sir. going through his stuff, you and awake? I want to know what you think. Florida. About what? You obviously know you more about coffee? this place than For I do. Once, I don't about what. Oh, hold on. <laughs> something, just, <laughs> something just got messed up. <laughs> Let me just reload it. Yeah, the bathroom only had red paint in it. is ordered, sir. You awake? Sort of. You forget your coffee? For once, I don't need it. I gotta talk to you about something. Um, okay. So this is interesting. Is she really did? dead? Have you seen this person? Rachel Foster, 5'3". 
Green shirt and jeans, brown anorak. Dude. I have a feeling it's gonna be like, oh, the dad never had sex with her and gave got her pregnant. I'm like, if someone's writing some fucking story about that, the dad could have just said, I didn't have sex with her and get her pregnant. But his insane obsession with a literal teenage girl, aka a child, who is the same age as his own daughter, who he fucked and took advantage of and got pregnant and she killed herself and he's still obsessing over her, I would absolutely hate this man if that was my daughter or my sister. I would nev I, I would just be so overwhelmingly filled with hatred that a man he's who's like, oh no, I loved her. You didn't fucking love her, you killed her. Yeah, I feel like there's so many hints being dropped, but I still have no clue what's going on and I love it. I think he did have sex with her. Yeah, I hope so too. Not in terms of like, I hope it happened. I just hate stories where it's like, actually, she made it all up. And I'm like, what the fuck is writing this story? Here I am. You didn't tell me you knew Leonard. I, I thought we'd been through that. Let me finish. I spent the night going through his stuff, and I want to know what you think. About what? You obviously know more about this place than I do. About what went on here, since I left at least. What do you mean, you went through his stuff? Uh, what are you looking for? Someone calls me and says Rachel is alive. Then a lipstick appears out of nowhere. It feels like something weird's going on. Rachel is dead. That's what everyone says. But maybe the story deserves a second pass. There are too many gray areas. Look, the storm is dying down. You'll be able to leave soon and go back to your life. And you can forget about the whole thing, like you did ten years ago. <laughs> what do you care about this old business? It's not worth losing sleep over just to play detective. I wonder if maybe he's like Rachel's brother or something. I'm not busy at the moment. I want to follow my instinct. I haven't done it in so long, and it feels like things don't add up here. Okay, let me hear what you're thinking. If there's one thing Leonard taught me, it's that you gotta listen to what's buzzing in your head. First, it might just be a confusing noise, but if you connect the dots, then it starts making sense. And right now, I've got a beehive in my head. <sighs> All right, let's go hunt some bees then. She was 16 years old. 16 years old. If we find out our dad didn't do it, no matter what, whoever did this to her, I'm so angry. Okay. <clears throat> Sheriff McDonald, it's suicide. We have her last words. The body of Rachel, daughter, Rachel, daughter of Pastor Solomon Foster, was found yesterday, late in the evening, in Wishard Creek near Sheep Mountain in Missoula County. The investigator confirmed she jumped from a 90 feet ridge over the mountain lake. We have a letter with a clear intent to put an end to her life said Sheriff McDonald. After the events at, her, at the Timberland Hotel and her vanishing, we were all worried about this tragic ending. Rachel was a kind and truly good girl, said Matthew Lawrence, assistant to Pastor Foster. She wouldn't commit a sin like a suicide by herself. She must have been overwhelmed by the sense of guilt. Do you wonder? I wonder... Is it possible that Rachel's father killed her because he was embarrassed? A week ago, an affair between teenager and Leonard McGrath, the Timberland Hotel's owner, a former professor of astrophysics, was exposed, was exposed with great scandal all over the county. The family is in mourning and asks for respect. Rachel was nine weeks pregnant, Doc Brown confirmed in t to the Daily. She wasn't engaged with anyone, and Pastor Foster affirmed that, that he did not notice any strange behaviors. Oh, thank you for <coughs> subscribing, Lady Mist. Thank you very much for five months. Thank you. There's nothing more to say, the MD added. Rachel became close to Leonard Grath during the months as she spent several hours at the Timberland Hotel in order to correct her dyslexia. 
The romantic liaison between the 49 years old professor and the teenager had been has been a secret until McGrath's wife Claire Wilson exposed the scandal, eventually fleeing from the hotel with the couple's daughter, Nicole, a week ago. It shocked, it shocked the entire building's heart. The principal told us today, it felt like a huge weight heavy on our souls. We are a tight-knit community, blah, blah, blah. So, listen to this. Graphologists doubt the authenticity of the suicide note left by the girl. Who said that? An investigative journalist. The article came out a year after her death. You think it's a setup? Perhaps. Okay, Bob, I'll hear you out. Maybe her dad killed her. In this article from a couple years back, there's a statement by some girl who affirms she saw Rachel in a hallway at the Timberline. Who's this girl? Uh, a classmate, Glenda Ferguson. I tore out the page. I think the magazine was M.T. Woman. Nicole, that's a gossip magazine. They would sell their mother, even their cousins and nephews, just for a bunch of new readers. Uh, I know, it's not a very reliable source. Rachel fell 90 feet into a void. She can't be alive. Thank you for the bits, who's there? Here. Hmm. <clears throat> I have a feeling that Rachel's just dead. And hoping that she's alive is a farce. And we're just gonna see that she's just this little girl who suffered from everybody else's fucked upness. I found a copy of the local paper, dated December 29th, 1981, the day that the body was discovered. According to the forensics report, Rachel had been dead for days. She was nine weeks pregnant. Huh. Yeah, that was the official version. Thank you for, this, for the bits, Ember Spirit. <gasps> She's here. Rachel Amber's here. In solidarity with other dead Rachels. The weird thing is, so she has dyslexia. Can't see your smile, honey. Today I saw Rachel. There's light everywhere. Rachel doesn't want to do her speech therapy exercises. I heard you, Rachel. You were right behind me. Rachel is sad. Rachel says she feels alone. Love you, Rachel. Somebody had sex with Rachel, and uh, it really, really makes me mad that he was basically her teacher. He was 49, she was depressed and sad, and 16 years old, and he fucked her. And that makes me so mad. If it wasn't him, it was somebody else who probably was also much older. I hope it wasn't her own dad, um, but it just makes me so mad. Hey, I found a book in Leonard's things. It's a collection of poetry, but it's got notes written in it. Did your father write them? What do they say? Dates, notes, thoughts. Listen to this. Today I saw Rachel. Or, Rachel is sad. Or, Rachel says she feels alone. He kept a diary about her. But the book was printed eight years after Rachel's death. Do you mean it's like he was talking with Rachel after she died? As if he saw her. 
Well, I mean, there must be an explanation. Of course. There's an explanation for everything, and we've got to find it. My bet is that he just feels really, 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 really guilty for being a child rapist and that everyone left him diver deservedly so. And so that he slowly descended into depression and sometimes depression has psychotic episodes to it. And if he's spending all of his time alone and only thinking about how he's a child rapist and how much he misses his child bride then yeah, he might make up the delusion that she's still alive and he can save her somehow because that's the biggest source of his guilt. So if somehow he can reverse the fact that she died, he could feel better. Thank you for subscribing, PP Mac. You're twerking. Thank you for subscribing for seven months. That's my theory. My theory is, to be clear, he had an affair with her, a child, because he's a piece of shit, Ruined his own life, ruined everyone else's lives, ruined her life, got her pregnant, she killed herself, or, I don't know, someone murdered her, and uh, he feels really bad about it, and he's made up a delusion in his head that there's a conspiracy saying that she's dead when she's actually alive, because if she was alive, he wouldn't have to feel bad anymore, but there's no changing what he did. So, that's my theory. You know, I can't stop thinking about Rachel's father. Reverend Foster. He was a very strict man. Harsh. Even for pastor standards. He and Leonard spent hours debating the nature of reality, the universe, and God. Well, opposites often attract. Do you ever see him? Rarely. He gives a service once in a while. Back in the day, I thought he was a kind of reptilian with a human skin suit. His daughter's death destroyed his ego. His faith made him even more cynical and lonely than he already was. I can remember him demanding, demanding, demanding total perfection from Rachel. That was insane. You don't think he could have harmed his daughter? Hey, no, no. But even Reverend Foster is a player we shouldn't underestimate in this story. Just saying. Uh, right. <sighs> Remember the lipstick I found downstairs? Yep, you made a big deal about it. It doesn't smell. Should it? After they've been open for a while, lipsticks smell really bad. Maybe there's been other women. I mean... Yeah, sure. Leonard ruined his life over a 16-year-old, became a recluse, lost everything, and in the meantime, he supposedly had another lover, maybe even two. Um, could the cold have preserved? Possibly. Anything else? Okay, I'd say that's enough. Yeah, that's enough for tonight. Uh, today, or what the hell time is it? You think there's a lot to dig up in this old story? Maybe, maybe not. Until I know exactly what happened. Any objections? You don't need my approval. Good job. You're getting the hang of it. But, sometimes it's better to leave the skeletons in the closet. Once they come out, you never know what they'll have to say. It's a risk I already considered. I can handle it. Hard-headed like your father. <laughs> Trust me, at least on this one thing. Go to bed. You need it. Agent Crawford, this bit of advice. <sighs> I'll follow it to the T. For one, God, imagine being this poor woman <laughs> stuck in a cabin, faced with the reality of how her dad was a shitlord, and then this e-boy just constantly doing low-key hitting on her while she's trapped. And honestly, I don't think she's trapped anymore. I think it's a strong possibility that he's lying to her, that she can leave, you know? 
Hey, cutie pie. How are you? Daddy? Daddy, is that you? Where are you? I can't see you. You came back in the end. It's like the inescapability of a celestial body's revolution. We can't help but follow certain stars' brightness. Even if those stars have died millions of years ago. Is it you? For real? Are you real? Their light is alive. And it reaches us. And those stars are alive and dead at the same time. Whoa. Daddy, where did you go? I missed you so, so much. Listen, sweet bee. My sweetheart. Listen to my voice. It's important. I can't see you. Where are you? Where are you? You know how much I love you. I know, Daddy. I've always known it. Oh, it's her I retainer. love you, too. Say it again, please. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Rachel. 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 So, I think we're starting to get a little bit of cabin fever here. And in case you don't know, cabin fever is a, fever is a real thing where if you are isolated and not speaking with other humans and stuff, you start to lose your mind a little. And you start to lose sense of time and energy and things like that. Morning. Am I interrupting? I was eating. Steak and potatoes, cheesecake, strawberry shake, and a frothy cappuccino, Italian style. <laughs> so the usual frozen beans. Sharp as attack, as always, Agent. Uh, I did find something. Um, some tapes that were found in the main office. In truth, I shouldn't even have taken them. Oh, so what'd you find, Billy the Kid? Well, I, I don't think it's anything useful. Uh, wait, wait, where did I put them? What? The pliers, so I can pry the words out of your mouth. Oh, sure. Okay, okay, it's, um... It's VHS of the behind the scenes of a TV broadcast, but it's it's all bullshit just to attract an audience. Uh, trust me. Jesus, that... you can be really long-winded. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, they're tapes about haunted hotels, weird and mysterious stories, stuff kids like, uh, with these guys who call themselves ghost hunters. Ghost hunters? <laughs> Did they hear about the old farting ghost? I'm not sure, but. Uh, uh, they went on a tour of old buildings in the county, and they stopped by the timber line, too. Whatever, let me hear it. Okay, uh, but I'm warning you, it's kind of... Well, listen for yourself. Okay, okay, the lights look good. How about the headphones? I don't know, there's like a buzzing noise. Listen. Yeah, true. Well, the German ones were better. <clears throat> we are about to enter a nightmare hotel. A place full of deceit and secrecy where terrible lies were played out. I didn't like that. I'll do it again later. Oh, the room with the fireplace isn't bad. Okay. Spare me the kitchen. I wouldn't know what the hell to say. Fireplace okay? Kitchen? No. Stan, where'd you leave all the gear? Room one. I stuck a piece of tape on the door. I didn't get that. What room? I got a buzz in the headset. Damn microphones. One, one, seven. Danny, what's that stuff in camera? It's, it's giving off a glare and burns out the frame. I told you no tricks. What tricks? I didn't use anything. <gasps> Stop fucking around, Danny. I told you I didn't rig anything. I saw it too. It's uh, a mirror, isn't it? Huh? It looked like the reflection on a mirror. What'd you smoke this morning? What the fuck are you two up to? Cut the crap, you freaking me. Holy shit, there it is. There it is. Where? I saw it. It's just up there. It's like a light, like a door that opens. I swear Damn I... Damn it! Stop touching me or you'll give me a heart attack. What are you talking about? I'm like over here. Fuck, I felt someone touch me. Are you kidding? 
That's it? Yep. The tape's damaged. Too damp. Well, I'd say fucking typical. How ladylike. What happened in the end with the TV show? Never aired. Some say they ran off, ditching everything there. Yeah, but they mention a room on the tape. I'd like to take a look. It's, uh, 117, I think. 117, yeah. Same floor as my apartment. Oh, I was gonna say, I wrote this. I wrote this, right here. If this ends up being one of those fucking stories where, like, actually, he wasn't, and he was falsely accused. I get the point of that, but what it really does is just go, like, makes people go, oh, you shouldn't believe victims. Like, the point of the story would be just don't believe victims. And I'd be like, okay, great. Anyway, so I wrote this to the man. It, this is me. This is a fucking message from me to the dad. Um... I like how someone wrote him, uh, like, a some sort of haiku about how he's a fucking pedophile. Let's see, there was a few things that I could have reported. I hate that pedophile sympathizer BS in media. Me too, it's almost as if pedophiles wrote it. Fluoxetine. That's Leonard's an relatives are pissed with me because I didn't go to his funeral. Well, everyone reacts differently to pain, I guess. Shit. What had become of you, Leonard? This place is a drugstore. Uh, for what it's worth, he always seemed clear-headed to me. And sad. Well, Irving, honey, maybe now we know why he thought he was talking to Rachel. Hmm. I think fluoxetine is an antidepressant. I think that's Prozac. Do not use in combination with Prozac or any other medication that contains hydrochloride. Uh-oh. Look at this. Hydrochloride. He was mixing hydrochloride with Brutein XL once daily. Brubapin. What was that sound? Did you guys lose the stream? Yeah, well, he has a prescription abuse problem for sure, I agree. So, that might explain a few things about how he was feeling and why he felt the way he did. can I report that now? The ghost hunters mentioned room one room one one seven on the tape. I want to check it to check, but where is it? Oh, we saw that earlier. It was like nailed shut or something. I want to open this mu music box. Damn it! All right, let's go to room one one seven. Why is she not reporting anything? I'm like pressing buttons and she's just not initiating a conversation. This game's kind of buggy. <laughs> Hello, Noodle Boy. I 
found the room. But? For someone barricaded it with an L bracket. Do what they do in movies. Bust through the door with your shoulder. Real funny. I need a screwdriver. I think I saw one around somewhere, but uh, I don't remember where. The basement. Probably in the basement. Seems to me I've seen one in the garage. Or was it the generator room? I'll let you know. It was the generator room, but a symptom of... Can I open this door? No. A symptom of cabin fever and depression is forgetfulness and not being able to remember things clearly and slowly believing in conspiracies and heightened anxiety. So even if you have agoraphobia, like me, you must go outside for your own mental health. There was a light switch up here that I wanted to press. Oh. Yeah, I'm severe, severely agoraphobic like you, PB Mac, but one must always challenge them. Why is this here? Do Oh my god. He's in the house. With us. That was somebody else's phone. Dude, the fuck boys could- is, is it- It's in the house. Hey, uh, found the screwdriver? No. I can't believe it. What a bunch of clowns. In Leonard's hotel. Here. Well, I can see why you're pissed. They must have shown up between deliveries. I can't stand the idea that my family problems might end up on cable or some tourist guide. Fortunately, it seems that won't happen. They hightailed it out of there. God only knows why. Don't tell me you believe in ghosts or some bullshit like that. Well, I'm not superstitious, but... If someone believes that a black cat is bad luck, then you also have to believe that something else is good luck. Huh? What are you talking about? Prayer, for example. For me, a black cat crossing the road just means he's on his way somewhere. <laughs> is that your line? Maybe, no, I don't know. But that's the idea. Screwdriver. I'm out of here. Can I open this? <sighs> I can't open the door. I have to go all the way. I have to go back. Uh, uh. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. I apologize. I keep hearing sounds in the game. Just like little sounds. You know? And I know it's coming from the game. So if you guys are hearing them too, please let me know that I'm not losing it. But I think one of the themes is is just hallucinating slightly. Because sometimes when you have cabin fever, you also hallucinate. So, Which is why they have things that vaguely look like handprints. Or it's, it seems like you're hearing things. Because if you have cabin fever, you do start to hear things and lose it a little bit. Sometimes it does seem hear, sound like someone's breathing into the phone. Oh, that's probably just me breathing loudly. But I do hear little sounds like... Eh, uh, uh. You know, like... Eh. Uh, I'm lost. Shit. Okay, hold on. Uh-oh, I'm lost. Help!
Yeah, I'm fucking lost. Okay, that has to stop the sounds. I don't like it. <laughs> They are doing a good job giving a, me a sense of paranoia right now. Credit for that. Keep thinking things are going to pop out at me. And I'm hearing the sound of my own footsteps. Makes me think I'm hearing someone else's footsteps and that scares me. Something's not right. Irving's luring you to, to a distant part of the place so he can break cover and nip to the toilet while you're gone. <laughs> true. Big true. One of these times we're going to be talking to him on the radio and we're going to be like, I hear a weird echo. And he'll be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because we're going to hear him from far away and then hear him on the radio. They're doing a really good job with the sound design making me paranoid because I fully am aware that it's possible that a lot of this is in our head and making us paranoid on purpose. I'm waiting for us to hear a fart. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if a fart gave him away? I like the camera angles for when they show us things like this. It really, uh, oh, don't scratch your... What the fuck is this? I don't like this. How much do you know about those TV shows? The ones about haunted houses? I know they're popular. A lot of tourism revolves around them. Did the whole... Rachel story really bring them here? Everyone in town knew about her suicide. Had a bit of gossip... <sighs> So sad to see the place you grew up in go downhill. I know. I'm so sorry. Believe me. Maybe that's the transmitter and I'm being paranoid, you know? Sounds like a woman's voice. A girl. 
What the? I'll bet living alone in a place like this all winter, he can't help but go nuts. <laughs> so depressing. Danny, did you get rid of the interference? Fuck, I pay you to do your job, not jerk around. Fuck off, Stan. What do you think I'm doing? It's a mess here. Nothing's working. There's voices. Listen, Danny, cut the crap. I'm gonna go have a sit, and if you don't figure it out by the time I'm done... Ah! What the fuck are you doing? I shot that thing! Well, you're not taking it. No, I mean for real! What? Huh? What the... No one's here, I'm telling you! What do you guys say? Looks more like a... Like a, a oh my... I thought they were all overreacting until the door closed on its own. <laughs> oh my god. No. What? Okay, so they were looking over here. I have to pee. <laughs> I have to pee. I'm so scared. Hold on. Let me just let me just go pee and I'll be back. Okay, um, I'm back, and I'm too scared to play, but that's okay. <laughs> um, Insane and Lola says they might have faked it, and we just happened to see a breeze. Too quiet. Can we talk to our our dude? Can we bring back Irving? Uh, Irving, I'm sorry, I talk shit. Can you talk to me, please? Whatever they saw, it was over there. Oh, we can use this to listen to voices.
Dude, we're gonna find Irving in this fucking place being weird. Walking Dead. The Cloud Syndrome. I know, me too. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing now, but... Hey. <gasps> For fuck's sake, Irving! The oh, sound... Uh, what did I do? It gave me a heart attack. Sorry. I'll warn you with a carrier pigeon next time. Damn. Uh, the sound didn't happen when he what? called. I I'm just curious to know what you found in that room. Well, you should be. You're never gonna believe it. What? How did he talk to us without making the sound? I'm ready for a scaries. What? Where's the music coming from? Where's where's the music coming from? It's not real. The music's not real cuz the little thing's not going off. Cuz if it was real, we'd be able to hear it. And it would, it would, the sound would make the needle go off, but it's not moving. Here I am. You still there? Where else should I be? Did you forget what day it is? I wouldn't miss Nicole's amazing adventures in the remote mountains for anything. Irving, don't tell me you're staying on just for me. Go! I promise not to get into any trouble for the rest of the night. I already told you. I'm sticking around till you get closure. Thanks. You always do that? Do what? Worry about every desperate stranger that knocks on your door. You're no stranger. We've never met, Irving. I can't even picture your face. You've been a part of this place since you were born. You belong here. Well, I thought I left all this behind. Maybe I still have a ways to go. To be free? You're making progress. Two days ago, you would have skinned me alive if I'd called you a country bumpkin. <laughs> Two days? Two days ago, I imagined you as a pimply kid from rescue services with a Boy Scout complex. Pimply? My skin is as smooth as a 12-year-old's. It's good we're just talking on the phone, then. Listen, is this contraption really a phone? It feels like a walkie-talkie slash defibrillator. It's a real phone, and trust me, in a few years, 
everybody will have one. You think? It's easier for me to believe in ghosts than to imagine people being hounded by a phone when they're out and about. I'm... I'm grateful for it. I wouldn't have met you without it. Irving, are you hitting on me by any chance? Uh, no. <laughs> what are you... I mean, it's just... I... Relax. I was kidding. <sighs> I can never tell when you're kidding. Yeah, it's one of my fascinating virtues. Same. Oh, hold on a sec. Don't go anywhere, okay? Huh? Oh, okay. You have a good night too, Miss Flattery. Merry Christmas. Good fake, night, not. <laughs> that was a fake right. voice. That was a fake voice. To be voice. honest, I never thought I'd spend Christmas like this. <sighs> Sorry, I was going off on another. That was a fake voice, the right? Of Nicole Wilson. Christmas Eve is the right time to reminisce. Yeah. Yeah. I get it too. Yeah. That's what there was, in the end. There was like a strange kind of warmth. What if we kiss in the haunted hotel and I'm a ghost? Christmas of 80. Me and my mom were at my aunt's house in Billings, and Leonard was here on his own. While I was pretending that I liked my aunt's sweater, he and she were... Nicole. They... Uh, hey. And a year later, she killed herself. And what she was carrying, too. Don't be like that. There you have it. These are my memories, and, uh... Hey, did you hear that? No. What are you talking about? Like a clinking. Uh, no. I, I don't hear anything. Sorry, I want to check. Uh, okay. It's not a real sound, we know that. I was thinking about earlier, when I said I was happy to have met you. Uh-huh. I, I just... I, I, I was trying to figure out how to tell you. I, I feel real close Not to you, Not now, Nikki. dude. I, God, I hear myself talk. I sound like an idiot. Irving, I, I don't know what you're trying to say, but right now, I'm dealing with something else. I want to be there to help you. I'm just a useless voice on the mic. Believe me, right now, I would also like a little bit more presence. You know, uh, people get close in lots of ways. Please, shh, a sec. I'm trying to listen to this noise. All right, I get that I might be overdoing it. Sorry, I'm a klutz, and, and sometimes it's... Irving, please, shut up. Thanks. Listen, we'll get back to this, but let me figure this out. Where is this sound coming from? I don't hear anything. Anyway, um... Later. I bet it's coming from her dad's man cave, aka his child rape cave. Oh, it's it's real. But it's blurry, so can we trust it? Sorry I didn't answer. I was, uh, busy. Oh, uh, no problem. It's fine. What'd you want to tell me? 
it's this microphone. Sometimes it captures sounds. What sounds? Whispers. It could be a draft in the crawl spaces. Hotel's full of them. Yeah, sure. Sorry. I didn't mean to worry you. Uh, heads up, and if you sense trouble, just let me know. Can I open this door? Maybe it's downstairs. This is some shining shit. Found anything? I can't hear that sound anymore. It's easy to freak out when you're on your own up there. Maybe you're right. Who knows, but it seems so similar to how I remember it. Hey, don't think about it anymore. If it comes back, we'll try and figure it out. You know, for a second it was nice to imagine that the past could come back like that. We always had a party on December 23rd. Maybe you heard about it? It's pretty well known in the county. <laughs> Sounds amazing. You should have seen the ballroom back then. I can almost picture it. The last time Rachel's family was there, Reverend Foster wasn't as sullen as usual. And your parents? My mother had eyes only for Leonard. And he... I saw he wouldn't stop staring at that girl. Rachel. She talked and moved with the grace and confidence of an adult. She wore a dress with a bow on her back. She was so beautiful. Perfect. Fuck. It was the beginning of the end and we were breaking out the champagne. Nikki, I... Sorry, I'm... <laughs> Coming a freaking nostalgic up here. Well, I, I can't hear that sound anymore. It's gone. I'm gonna look around again, and then I'm going to bed.
Be careful. Dude, we're gonna get fucking ghosted. Call me creep, Nikki. You creep, yeah. <laughs> Our name is Nicole. He's calling us Nikki because he desperately wants a GF. If he wasn't so eager on the very first day. Are we in Outlast now? If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have no, not charity. I am become as founding brass of tinkling symbols. I'm sure there's some really important script like stuff in here, but the Bible is not my favorite. Sleeping bags. Sacred image. We must be in the church area of the hotel. Oh. Maybe some homeless people live here? Maybe this is where Irving lives? Creepy hopscotch. Yeah, she definitely has some cabin fever. And I have a feeling that Irving is kind of steering her in the wrong direction. Because I don't think he should... If he was a part of FEMA and shit, I don't think he would allow her to be trapped here for eight days. Like, I find that hard to believe. Like, something as fishy is going on with the eight whole fucking days where she's like, Yeah, I don't have any food. And we haven't heard anyone else. And the creepiest thing was him saying, Goodbye, Mrs. Whatever. And he goes, Goodbye. That was clearly him saying that, right? Like, he literally said that. For, to, like, trick us. What water is flowing to make that? Is he taking a shower right now? I can't even pull up the map or do anything. Wait a second. That's men's underwear and a socks. Our sweater or his sweater. He lives in the house for sure. Also, we haven't heard anyone else at so-called FEMA headquarters and now supposedly has been staying saying bye to someone yeah maybe he knew Rachel probably no hate on somebody needing a place to sleep and eat and stuff but if you're gonna be having a whole entire farce and I have a feeling he stole her keys because remember at the beginning she couldn't find her keys I think he stole her keys
What if we're somehow Irving? I would die. I think that's too cliche for my liking, you know? It's a little too... Oh, it, it was so... Uh, things, you know? Like, who cares? Like, it was us all... I can get down with like, oh, you heard things? It's, it makes you a little crazy? Um... Because I can get down with that, but when it's like the, the very first day you make up a voice in your head? No. So did we dig this up <coughs> from storage just so we wouldn't be lonely? Does nobody care that we're stuck here? Do we not have any friends? Nobody has put a missing persons report out for us and asked. I don't trust this. What am I supposed to be doing here? Also, I don't have a map or anything. I just woke up. Should I go to bed? Is the game bugged? What am I supposed to be doing? Oh, inventory. Now I have my inventory. Ah, we didn't have Irving. Our Merry Christmas, Nikki. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's a little late for holiday greetings, but I expected that. What? Well, I, I thought you were calling to... Hey, is everything okay? Yes. I mean, I, I don't think so. No. What happened? I think... I sleepwalked. Like in the old Laurel and Hardy movies? I'm serious. I, I woke up in church, standing in front of the lectern. Wow. Does that happen a lot? No! Uh, one doesn't just become a sleepwalker from one day to the next. It used to happen when I lived here. One time in February, I ended up outside. But no parent leaves the doors unlocked if their kid sleepwalks. I never told anyone. Sleepwalking episodes are common in children. That's not the point. I forgot all about it. Then I come back here and it happens again. If I ended up in that church, maybe there's a reason. Mm, Sometimes probably not. following your instinct is the best thing. I don't want to go back there now, but I'll think about it. Oh, uh, Irving? Yeah? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Nikki. Thank you for the subscribing, Imp Emissary, for five months. What should I do now? I have to go back to the church. Don't want really, but my sleepwalking must be a sign. Great. Thank you for subscribing, Zana Huntress. Yes, thank you so much. Much appreciated. I don't... I don't like all the little sounds, like the knocking. How did we even get... to... I forgot... Uh, hi. Uh, I, I was thinking, there really could be a repressed reason as to why you ended up there. So you're excluding the idea that I received our Lord's calling in the dream? I never thought about that. Sister Nicole doesn't sound bad at all, though. Oh, fuck off. Hey, language, Sister Nicole. All right, all right. So, if I think about the church, I think about my mother. She often helped Reverend Foster. She decorated for holidays, did fundraising, and put up booths to involve the whole community in parish activities, you know, that kind of stuff. I know what you mean. I think she found gratification in doing that, something she didn't get elsewhere. 
including the hotel. When we moved to Portland, she quit. Fundraising? God. I gather you didn't exactly have a high opinion of your mother when you were a kid. Well, she was really busy with the hotel. I was always running after Leonard. He was much more fun than she was, no doubt about it. He was a philosopher capable of calculating the motion of celestial bodies while taking apart and refitting a motorcycle in less than half an hour. What about her? In the same half hour, she could have audited a business balance sheet. There you go. Ah, a businesswoman. Hmm, no. What I understood later, living in such proximity to her, is that Mom loved feeling needed. A religious community like ours makes you feel needed, without a doubt. I suppose. Uh, rope, Ropes642 brings up that he doesn't like it when women swear, and it came up last stream. That's a good point. Uh, all we can really get from this is that Irving is most likely trash. Nikki? When there was a party, my mother always got out the usual streamers and decorations and stuff. She raced in and out of the church, but I never discovered where she kept all those things. Never asked? Oh, a million times. She didn't want to answer. She said they were in a safe place. A real mystery. <laughs> what kind of decorations could they have possibly been? Nothing explosive. It's just that I had the bad habit of sneaking all over the place and forgetting what time it was. There was that huge lady, the uh, assistant cook, Mrs. Bryce. She used to get so mad. <laughs> <laughs> A judicious girl. They promised to reveal the secret storeroom when I got older, but I must have forgotten. The mystery of the secret storeroom. Ooh, sounds good. The riddle! What are you talking about? Leonard was never good at keeping secrets, but he taught me a riddle to get there. Can you remember it? <laughs> Incredible. Yes. Oh, something like, down the stairs, watch your step, don't fall apart or it's your end, round a corner, turn around, there's your way in front of you, all that's closed can be open to if you see beyond its looks. But how can I remember it? How... it's... I... I... Wow. A total mystery. Wanna play? Uh, I... yes. I need to think about it. I have no idea what it means. I'll, I'll call you if anything comes to mind. Round a corner. Maybe she's talking about the doll shoe? The if I solve the riddle, I could finally find the old storage room. Round a corner, turn around. I need to remember the thing. That's a shitty ri riddle. Well, thank god the demonic butterfly fixed it for me. I see Leonard through these holes. No decorations. Is everything okay? I found something. What? I... It's like someone built some kind of bedroom. Irving, you there? Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, what bedroom? T tell me what you see. Okay. I... Uh, there's some windows. Drawn on the walls. Books. Sheet music. A pink bed. It's like a kid's room. No way. This 
place doesn't make sense. No one would live down here. Nicole, Nikki, I think you should get out of there now. <laughs> wait, 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 there's gotta be an explanation. Okay, that's it. Now I'm calling the head office in Billings. I'm telling them it's a code red emergency, so they'll have to- Jesus Christ, Irving. What? This is all Rachel's stuff. Understand? It's her room, a, a, a replica. Uh, you don't know that. Y you can't know what her room looked like. Everything here reminds me of her. Let me look around. I'm sure I'll find an explanation. But my other hand's on the red phone. Keep it there, but don't make the call. I need to figure out what's going on here. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. We have to call someone. You have to get out of there right now. No, I found a key. It's from my old music box, the one in Leonard's room. I'm having a hard time following. If everything in here is Rachel's, then why is my music box's key here? I don't know and I don't want to know. Tell you what I think? Someone could have been in your room. It doesn't matter. How can you be so calm? If someone was in there, he's not here now. I need to grab the chance to figure out what the hell is going on, or went on, here. Oh my god. There's holes in the door so somebody could watch somebody in here. Remember when they said that Rachel went yes. missing? Nicole, listen. I already know what you're gonna say, but please trust me. Get out of there. No way. You do realize you found a replica of a dead girl's bedroom. This is sick. This is a... a the a... more things get freaky, bizarre, and painful, the more I need to figure out why... Why all of this... We'll figure it out with the sheriff. Once you're out of there, into a safe hotel room in town. Please, just... Listen! A bunch of strange things happened since I got here. Think about it! Phone calls on a deadline. Old lipsticks that don't go bad. Leonard's notes where he says he saw a girl that's supposedly been dead for ten years, and now this! All good reasons get out of there. We both agree that saving your skin is top priority, right? I've looked over every inch of this place, and there's no one. If it's true, you realize what that means. What? What are you trying to tell me? Your father spent years in there. In total solitude. With the weight of his family and Rachel in his conscience. He, he wasn't the kind of guy to just let the past slide with a shrug. You know that too. I can't believe you said something like that. Think about it. That room could be an act of love. Distorted, even morbid, but in his eyes... How dare you! My... My father might have had a lot of weaknesses, but surely, what you're saying... Leave out that he cheated on my mom. Leave out that he fell in love with a 16-year-old. Didn't fall in love. Fucking hell, don't you dare even think that! I... He would never have built a fucking underground shrine for a dead person. He 1,000% would have. Your father had changed in the end. You didn't spend time with him, but I met him, and... I'm telling you. No! I don't give a shit about what you have to say. I just want you to know that... If you don't want to help discover the truth, don't call me. Um... So, they said that Rachel went missing for like a week after it was found out that she was being raped by an adult man. I... Yeah, I definitely think he has guilt over her dying, but I also think it's possible that maybe he, like, kidnapped her for a whole ass week and kept her here. Mostly because this is a metal door with holes in it, so he can stare into the room and watch her. Because you don't know how old this room is. 
But the thing that we know for sure is Leonard made this room. And why would he put this here? That's just weird. Probably something kids called her because she's dyslexic. She, I don't think that, but it's something that kids would do. Teach me to talk. The speech therapy manual. I hate Leonard. My dad may have been a pedophile and a rapist and cheated on my mom while being a rapist, but he would never do this. And I'm like, he 1000% would. the fuck falls in love with a kid like that? Asshole. How dare you? You don't know shit. You don't know fuck. Finally, a bit of peace and quiet. It'll help me clear my head without those incessant phone calls. I'm not a fucking switchboard, for fuck's sake. Okay, let me piece things together. I just found out there's a room dedicated to Rachel Foster in my father's hotel. Maybe with items from her real room. Holy Jesus, that's freaky. Some people think she didn't commit suicide. And some even think she's still alive. She's dead. Maybe if I think through my steps, I can work something out. First thing, the phone call. They said Rachel isn't dead. Then, the lipstick from ten years ago turns up still good. And then... My father's various notes where he says he still sees her. If that were true, it might explain the sighting by her friend here in the Timberline. And now I find her retainer box, but no retainer. That room might not be a reconstruction. If Rachel didn't kill herself, Rachel could have lived here. But if she's still alive, why doesn't she tell her parents? Unless they're all in cahoots. No suicide, no Timberline money. No, 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 I'm just being paranoid. And then there'd be no reason for her to live in a fucking underground replica of her room. My key in the middle of Rachel's stuff. Is it a message? Where do I fit in? Your dad's a fucking creep. That's Are what you it is. Are trying to tell me something, Dad? Yes, I'm an insane music pedophile. Box with the hockey player. I don't think I have the guts to hear that tune again. But I must. Dude, if your dad abused you too, oh my God, that's that's a lot. That's a fucking lot. Rachel's not her sister. Rachel is her the pastor's kid. The 27th of December, 1983. The hockey finals at Missoula. Us against Cold Springs High. We won by sudden death after a three-hour game and I got the medal for the most number of face-offs won. According to the papers, that was the night Rachel killed herself. Coming home, Mom barely had the time to pull into the garage that I was already racing up to you, waving the medal in your face, Daddy. I was so happy. But you had other things on your mind, right? And you and Mom started fighting. The voices getting louder. That long silence when she comes down the stairs with the suitcases and Mrs. Bryce tries to stop her. Mom's car stays here and we leave with my Uncle John's. I never found out what started that fight. Mom never wanted to talk about it. Are you trying to, Daddy? What? Yeah, Nicole's key being in Rachel's room, plus the retainer being in the dream where Leonard called Nicole Rachel. I don't like this. Yeah, me neither. 
Irving. Finally. I'm okay. I was dying on this chair. You're right. That room freaked me out. So, I looked around the entire hotel, and if there's still a chance of getting to the bottom of the story, then it's got to be behind the locked door on the last floor, in the attic. That wing has been condemned for years. I know. I'll be careful. Okay. There are too many things that I took for granted. It's as if someone was putting pieces of my past in front of me to show them to me under another light. Who are you talking about, Nikki? Maybe it's my father. In my music box, I found the medal I won the night Rachel died. Dad could have put it there, and if he did, there must be a reason. It... it all sounds insane. The night Rachel died. Maybe I have to start from there. I played in that really long hockey game. But what was going on in the meantime? Uh, rape? Murder? You remember that night, Irving? I think I was at church with my family. Church? That night we had a mass for the poor here. We held one every year. As usual, Mom volunteered to take me to the game, but she was so busy with the soup kitchen that I was afraid she was going to be late. I remember while she ran around, she said she ordered me to close the mezzanine. You mean the intermediate floor above the reception? What's in there? A storeroom. Have you been up there? No, I'd forgotten all about it. I'd better take a look before moving on. Did you guys see that light that went across the floor? This place is making me so paranoid.